Hello guys. So today I'll be talking about Python web frameworks. So Python is a high level programming language. Uh, you can use it for a number of things. Um, it's very popular these days for data science and um, okay, I'll be here. Scientific numeric software development, web development, etc. So in this video I want to look at some of the Python web frameworks. So if you are a backend developer or you just learned Python and then you want to go into web development, what are the tools that are popular in 2019 for Python web development? So let's go into it. So, by far, the most popular Python web framework is Django. By far, like, it's the most popular web framework. And it has this tagline, the, okay, the web framework for perfectionity deadlines. The good thing about Django is, Django is a full, you can call it and describe it as a full web programming framework. And it has a lot of batteries involved, a lot of um, things, authentication, everything that you probably need for your web application is in Django already. So you just write your views, your models, and everything, and then you get your app deployed. So one other thing about Django is the documentation. Django documentation is very, very good it's very very good like that's one of the key for me that's one of the key features of django like a lot of the things that you are looking for you find in your in your documentation and it is a community like it's very active there are a lot of tutorials online for you to get things done in django so i use django personally and then um, it's been fun it's been fun so it's really cool and um, next one, I'm looking at this Flask. So, in the in the Python community, Django and Flask are like on the two end of things, like where Django is kind of like the fully developed, um, full scale web framework why flux is a micro framework that's what they call it like micro so flux is described as a micro framework and this is so because it doesn't have a lot of the additional apps that let's say something like django has in flask you can get to make your decisions get to do a lot of things yourself you get in there and do some things a good example is can be the Django ORM in Django you you can specify how how your data is stored in the uh, in the database using the Django ORM that's the object relational mapper but in Flux there's nothing like that so you make a decision by yourself about how you want your data to be stored and a lot of things like that so most people a lot of people like they fall into that area okay are you using flask or are you using django so then pyramid pyramid i i have some interest in pyramid i've worked on it in the past but not so much recently like well pyramid yeah pyramid is cool i know that at some point it was used at dig so uh and it has its own they have their own idea of how things should be and how you know the whole thing should the whole programming web programming thing they have down set of um, ideas 
so but it's really cool i think and it's developed by the pylons project i think they have some other the pylons project I think they have some other um python framework you know yeah python framework that they've done i think that was plume but now they have pyramid so so up next we're talking about tornado tornado is a python web framework and it's ideal for long polling and web sockets so the major difference between tornado and the other python web frameworks i've discussed earlier is that tornado uses a non-blocking network io so what that means is each each request is not blocking the other and one uh okay this is the hello world example for tornado if you look at some of these um, minimalist frameworks you see that the there's um example app like the simple hello world app are usually very small like flask and here tornado the pyramid you see the num number of lines of code you need to write to actually push out one uh, a simple hello world text as your root as your root site is really small but then I, I would like to show this uh, tornado simple chat we, it, I like one of the major features of tornado is one of it's part of the example apps so here is actually the code I don't think they have the demo here but basically what the basically what the uh, this um, chat app is is for is that you use sockets and then we can have just like a chat room that different people are messaging to the same chat room at the same time so basically that's what uh, that's one of the key features of tornado that you can um, use it with web sockets you can also achieve this with the other python frameworks in django for example you can use django channels but i'm not delved into that but basically when it comes to tornado you have these features keyed into the framework so that's tornado all right so cherry pie is what you mentioned cherry pie here they are bragging 10 years old actually i saw cherry pie first on a forum and i just looked at it and since i was already working on working with some frameworks i didn't really use it at the time but basically cherry pie is yes another minimalist python framework I think it's really good. You can explore and see what you get with it. So, Cherry Pie, one of the Python web frameworks. So here is Sonic. Sonic is a little more like a little more like Flask. It's, it's done a little more like Flask, and I think the main difference would be the non-blocking non-blocking feature but sonic is a little more like flux i'm not really worked with this either but maybe in a coming coming projects or something i'll actually get to work with it so sonic and yeah falcon so falcon is a little bit different to the others in that Falcon is majorly designed for APIs. When you work on projects, you get to a point where you find out that the normal way, let's say you're working with Django, Django natively works with templates. Okay, you want to run that web page. But these days, you are going to be working with single single page web apps the interfaces javascript frameworks like view angular so i think that's where falcon is trying to key into that 
it's delivering json it's delivering for apis straight out of the box and this kind of feature you can actually achieve with django as well <laughs> django is really an uh, a library for everything in a sense when it comes to django although when it comes to speed you may have issues so uh, a similar package to this in django will be the django rest framework that helps you to uh, deliver your uh, apis and render your content in json so but uh, falcon air um, one other important thing i would like to mention about falcon is the benchmarks here they have really really amazing uh, benchmarks like for the same number of requests Django is rendering around 3,000 and Falcon is rendering almost 50,000 requests per second on on a Google Cloud Compute Intel Skylake on, on CPU 2 gig RAM uh, running Ubuntu 18 but what did you know about this kind of things is the use cases are different there are some times where a uh, a framework like Falcon won't be the best choice that maybe Flask will be better or Django will be better so just keep an eye for that and actually I've seen cases where people use multiple frameworks like okay Django and Flask in their web development architecture so maybe you started out with Django and then they felt that okay for this particular part of the application we need Flask or for this particular part of the application, we need Falcon. So basically, what you just be having is uh, the database, and then maybe when you are sending a request for a static website, that routes to Django. If they are sending a request for API, that routes to Falcon, depending on your specific needs. So I'm really, really interested in Falcon. I'll ensure I work on some projects with it so really cool the the python python community is actually very interesting when you have problems you can always find help on stack overflow you join communities you do meetups and it's really cool so guys that is my list of python web frameworks to check out in 2019 actually if you do a simple google search for Python web frameworks, you see a whole lot of frameworks. You can see here Django number one. <laughs> yeah. The Flags, up to Pi, Cherry Pi, Turbo JS, Python Project, Bottle, and so on and so forth. That a lot. You can even see that there are some that I mentioned that are not here. So a lot um, the beauty of the Python community is anybody can come up with their own framework. You can look at the whole uh, ecosystem and try to do something different or just roll out your own. So, happy coding, guys. So, see you in another video. You can always subscribe to my channel. I'll bring up more interesting videos on Python programming or other interesting stuff. So, see you in another video.